Hello? I'm a news person, and here's some news. Last week, devastation literally rained down onto Houston, Texas and surrounding areas when Hurricane Harvey ballooned from Category 1 to Category 4 alarmingly fast after passing over a region of warm ocean called an eddy, because the intensity of a storm is determined in part by how warm the ocean is. And not to get all political, but scientifically, the global ocean surface temperature has risen 1.1 degrees Fahrenheit in the past 130 years, which might not seem like a lot, but in Celsius, it's point six one 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 degrees so so it might not seem like a lot but in terms of affecting climate it is storms are getting worse harvey's already had more rainfall than any other storm on record in the continental united states it's had three times as much rain as 2005's katrina katrina had the biggest storm surge recorded in u.s history according to the intergovernmental panel on climate change there will be fewer storms globally but the intensity will increase which sounds bad but is in fact very bad and even if you don't think climate change is caused by humans and carbon emissions cough cough it cough is puke, it's still happening. Even our climate change denying president wants to build a seawall at his golf resort in Ireland, citing, yes, climate change. It's going to cost more and more lives. And if that's not your thing, it's going to cost more and more monies. Katrina cost about $108 billion, which is, I'm told, lots of money. Harvey could cost an estimated $190 billion, according to AccuWeather, which is, I'm told, the name of a company. Speaking of companies, people. And speaking of people, this segue is really bad, I'm sorry. There are just a lot of things to pack in about this because we're woefully unprepared for these disasters, which disproportionately affect poor people and displace large populations, and in some cases, cause explosions at chemical plants, and our infrastructure isn't prepared for this. And all of these problems will get worse, and our president wants to fix our infrastructure through privatization and tolls, something good for companies and bad for people. And the president's proposed budget makes big cuts to FEMA, something good for storms and bad for people. But in the face of adversity and hardship, people still come together. Here's a line not of people wanting food or water, but of people wanting to volunteer. Here's a line of people with boats driving to Houston to aid in rescue efforts. And even though a reporter called the cops on survivors taking food from a flooded grocery store during a fucking disaster, and law enforcement put up immigration checkpoints during evacuation from a fucking disaster, people also managed to shame Pastor Joel Osteen into opening the doors of his $100 million megachurch so survivors would have a place to stay. Something Jesus would not need to be shamed to do. Something a furniture store owner like Mattress Mac wouldn't and didn't need to be shamed to do. So even though we're not doing the things necessary to prepare for these disasters, people still come together during them and lift each other up, sometimes literally, like this human chain pulling someone out of the water. The strong, the wealthy, help the weak and the poor. Like how during this disaster, the president made a speech on tax reform and is taxing the rich and his rich friends? No. Uh. Nothing about the disgustingly wealthy contributing more to lift up the less fortunate? No, okay. He's cutting his own taxes? Okay. Then let's not talk about it. And let's not talk about the president? Fine. So yeah, as the president of a whole country, President Donald Trump visited an area near the damage from the storm, and then some dumbest mother asshole on the Shitting planet tweeted, Trump is now standing in a puddle acting like a president. Give me a break. And of course, that's actually a tweet from President Trump in 2012 about President Obama comforting Hurricane Sandy victims. So I guess it's only fair that we now do a segment called Standing in a Puddle, Acting Like a President. So first, the president decided to go to Camp David by himself to monitor the storm while Vice President Mike Pence ran the White House Situation Room. So pretty good start, president-wise. He quickly tweeted, Just arrived at Camp David, where I'm closely watching the path and doings of Hurricane Harvey as it strengthens to a Category 3. Be safe! Then he quickly tweeted, Just arrived at Camp David, where I'm monitoring the path and doings of Hurricane Harvey as it strengthens to a Class 3. 125 miles per hour winds! And then he quickly kept both of those up. He live tweeted the storm and gave weather updates like a... This is president, but I feel like it should say weather man. And he got a few good photos of him alone at Camp David, acting like a president, his words. And I'm sorry, that is a sharp hat. Like, I know this is a serious situation and you know, disaster, but where can I get a hat like that? Oh, the president's website for $40. Can we zoom in to the $40 hat that a president advertised during a national disaster? No, zoom in more, no, even more. No, like, like zoom in. So it's a single pixel, like a white void from which we all may find relief. Thank you. 
Pulaski kept live tweeting and marveling at the historic size of the storm as if to say, look at me and my big boy storm, I have only the best hurricanes, without quite arriving at the conclusion that maybe this is a global trend about which he should be concerned. He tweeted some places people can donate to help out with relief efforts, except that's a lie. He tweeted promoting a book by Sheriff David Clark, a human rights violator. And then instead of standing in a puddle acting like a president, he walked over a puddle acting like a president and traveled to Texas right after grabbing two $40 president hats, which this show is now brought to you by. President hats, continuing the long tradition of presidents hawking their overpriced crap during emergencies. Like the letter U, especially when it's followed by the letter S, and especially when that S is followed by an A, well, buy, buy one of these from the president. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Anyway, he eventually got to Texas to survey damage and perhaps meet with and empathize with survivors of the tragedy. Do we have a clip? What a crowd, what a turnout. Do we have a better clip? No. Okay. Well, according to the president, quote, after witnessing firsthand the horror and devastation caused by Hurricane Harvey, my heart goes out even more so to the great people of Texas. And the best photo they had to illustrate witnessing firsthand was the president watching the weather on a TV in a slick and stylish president hat. Just $40 at the president's website. President hats, ethical, but more importantly, very ethical. I don't wanna talk about the president anymore. Here's some news. The New York Times revealed that during the 2016 campaign, an associate of President Trump's was working on negotiating a real estate deal with a man named Vlad Putin, who was the president of Russia at the time. Oh, still now, same guy, still president of Russia. The associate assured that a Trump Tower in Moscow would quote, get Donald elected. The associate is Felix Sater, literally a Russian mobster, who in 1998 pleaded guilty to racketeering for a $40 million stock fraud scheme that involved two of New York City's infamous five families. And he went to jail in 1991 for stabbing a broker in the face with the stem of a martini glass. He also ran Bayrock, a real estate company that worked with the Trump Organization on several projects and had an office in Trump Tower. But anyway, this random guy, Felix Sater, emailed Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, to say, quote, our boy can become president of the USA and we can engineer it. I will get all of Putin's team to buy in on this. And then, reading ahead, just scanning here, Trump became president, and that couldn't still be true. It shouldn't still be true. I mean, like all that stuff I just said, like they got him, right? What? Are you kidding me? Here's some news. Hollywood has decided to take a big swing for feminism and do an all-girl remake of Lord of the Flies, which was about the replication of systematic toxic masculinity and violence. So maybe just making the characters girls is actually a terrible idea, regardless of who's making it, which is, yup, two men. Can't wait. Can we end on a good note this week? Here's some news. Rising Democratic Senator Kamala Harris has said that she'll co-sponsor Bernie Sanders' upcoming Medicare for All bill, further pushing the idea that healthcare is a human right, and we as a nation should be able to lift everyone up and take care of each other. Because in terms of payers, Bernie would have won. Like, single payer. And he would have won the election. But I normally don't talk during this part, but I don't like the silence, so I'll just... Hello? I'm a news person! Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video with your eyeballs. If you want to click the C in the middle, you'll subscribe to our channel. If you want to click the bell icon, you'll get notifications. And if you want to contribute to the relief effort in Houston, we've provided some links below. And if you want something else, you gotta get it yourself, you know? You gotta go out there and you gotta get it. Yeah, you go get it. <laughs>